In today's video, I'm on the portable smoke and go and it's a multifunctional grill, smoker, and fire pit. Hey, this is Ricer from Dead Broke Barbecue, Wisconsin, and welcome back to the channel. But if you're new here, we try to help you enhance and amplify your backyard barbecue fun. Now the smoke and go is awesome for all you campers, hunters, and people that just wanna go to the lake for a day and still be able to cook something. So grab a lawn chair and a bundle of firewood, Paul. We're gonna amplify some backyard barbecue fun. So today I'm doing a rack of St. Louis ribs on the Smoke and Go Outdoor Cooker. And this little cooker is incredibly versatile. You can smoke on it, you can grill on it, and later at night you can go ahead and make it into a fire pit and roast some marshmallows. And you can see it's very compact. Just grab it by the handle, pick it up and carry it around. Now there is some weight to it because it is 100% stainless steel. And you can tell they took their time and did some dang good quality spot welds. Now I've used the smoke and go one time just to grill up some steaks on it and it turned out pretty dang good. And obviously this smoke and go is meant for traveling. And even if you just wanna go out and check out the back 40, grab it and go. And that's what I'm showing you today that you don't have to be at home to use it. It's a beautiful fall day today and we headed north to give the smoke and go a try. So the first thing we do is just go ahead and unhook the clamps. Grab it by the handle and we're gonna pull it right off the bottom tray. Gotta adjust my St. Louis ribs here. Now it comes with three stainless steel racks, but we're only gonna use two of them today. So first you just have the bottom tray, then take your first level and put that inside the bottom tray. Now I've already attached the knob for our bottom vent. Now take your charcoal grate and that, the rods are a lot closer and it's obviously the biggest rack out of the three. Set that in here, then just grab your next level and get that set on and now it's time to get the charcoal in. Now I'm just using some Kingsford briquettes on this cook. We're gonna dump them in. And we're just kind of putting them in here minion style. We'll adjust them in a little bit. I'm gonna put on a rubber glove because I don't want to get my hands dirty. And then just start stacking them in the corner. And we don't have to be too fussy because we're only doing one rack of ribs today. And it's better to get them pushed back to the back wall. And I'm also gonna add just a few pieces of cherry to this cook. But we're gonna wanna make sure that we put this wood in a little early in our cook. Don't have it too far down because this is when we're gonna start tenderizing it. Now, we can go ahead and light up the smoke and go, but make sure your charcoal's not in the way. But I'm gonna use my grill gun today to light this up. If you do not have a grill gun or a torch, Get 15 briquettes lit and ashed over, and then go ahead and fill up the rest of your charcoal. Obviously, this is always the fun part. Now with a grill gun, it usually only takes about a minute or so to get these briquettes hot. That's good enough. Now this is your grilling level, but you'd obviously fill up the charcoal just a little bit different than the way we've got it right now. Now grab your next level and get that on. And now grab your grate, and we're gonna wanna make sure that these rods are facing up. Now I'm gonna get my next level on, and then just simply grab the lid, and we'll get that on. We're gonna wanna open up this bottom vent to about a quarter inch or so, just to start out with. And the same thing with the top. Now Smoke and Go does provide you a nice little chef thermometer to check the internal temperatures on that pit. But I'm gonna use my signals today. So now I'm just gonna get my signals hooked up and I'm actually just gonna go ahead for right now and place that ambient probe temperature right in the top. Now my signals has a magnet on the back so I can actually just go ahead and put it right here and it'll sit there for the rest of the day. Now I'm just gonna let the smoke and go run for about 15 minutes so that charcoal starts to ash over just a little bit in the beginning. And you saw that I did kind of a minion method, but in this little cooker, being that it's so compact, you're not gonna have to get real fussy about stacking up your charcoal, but you are gonna wanna check it once in a while when you're checking that rib to make sure that it's continuing through the cook. Now the rub that I'm using today on that St. Louis cut is some jalapeno maple. It's from Simon Barbecue. Check the links below, it's really good. And it seriously does have some chunks of jalapeno in this rub. 
sounds fantastic. My 15 minute timer went off. I'm gonna go ahead and put in that St. Louis rip. Open up the vent just a little bit for now. Get our ambient temperature probe out. Now I don't wanna leave the cover off too long, but this thing is really starting to sweat up. And just look at that color. Beautiful. Get our rack of ribs in here and we're gonna squish them up and keep them off to the side of that minion. Now grab our lid and get that back on. And I'm also gonna put my ambient temperature probe back in there, but I'm gonna keep it right off the top of that grate. Now set a timer for a half an hour and that way you can come back out and rotate this rack of ribs. You wanna make sure that it's getting an even cooking temp throughout the entire cook. You don't wanna just leave it in one spot because I don't really know how much charcoal it's gonna take to finish off these ribs, and this way I can actually speed up the process by flipping it end for end. I don't know, I might only use half that charcoal. We'll see. It's a small chamber and the convection, it's gonna speed up the process also. My 30 minute timer went off, I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this rack of St. Louis ribs. Pull out our ambient temperature probe again, and we'll take off our lid. <clears throat> now you can see that I'm starting to get some pretty good color on them and we're starting to get a little bit of pullback already on that end. So we'll just rotate them, put them back here in this corner, and then we'll just go ahead and place our lid right back on. Put the handle on this side, it's a little easier for me. Get that ambient temperature back in there. Close up the vent. Now there was a lot of moisture on these ribs, so there's no sense to add any more. But if they're starting to look a little dry, we'll add a little bit of 50-50 apple cider vinegar in water just to keep them moist but so far, they're still sweating pretty hard. Now, Smoke & Go sends you these wire clamps, and that's if you wanna close that chamber up even tighter and get those temperatures to run even lower. Now, before I pulled the lid, I was running right around 290 degrees. That's not too bad, but I wanna try to get those temps down just a little bit lower. So I might go ahead and close this thing up so you don't have any more air leaks because it's crazy windy out today it's putting more air in that chamber for sure. Now these wire clamps are really easy to hook up. Just grab it, hook it into the latch, and on top you got these catches. Get the wire on this side, then just grab your latch, close it up. That's gonna make it a more airtight seal, and that'll actually bring the temperatures down. I'm hoping that I can drop the temperature in the smoke and go about 15 degrees. 290 isn't bad, but it's much better to cook a rib at about 275, in my opinion. Maybe this is a new hot and fast competition cooker. If it holds it at 300 all the time, that's where they cook. So just set a timer for 30 minutes and keep on checking that rib. You wanna make sure that it's not getting too dry, but you also wanna make sure and start checking for the tenderness. I'll bring you back to the cooking part when it's time to wrap these ribs up. I don't really know what you people think, but to me, going up north to the hunting shack, sitting in front of a fire, drinking a beer, and smoking some meat, that's the good life. What a beautiful weekend. Yep, there goes the timer. I gotta check my ribs. That's a pretty hard thing to do right now because I don't even want to get up, but I got to. I gotta rotate them ribs. But first I better throw another log on the fire. Now one thing you're gonna wanna make sure that you're very careful of, that this cooker is stainless steel. So it's gonna be very hot. So always wear some type of protective gloves. You don't wanna burn yourself. But we gotta loosen up these clamps. Get them off. Gotta move my beer, don't wanna knock that over. Yeah. It's like 15 miles to the nearest liquor store. I don't feel like driving anywhere. Pull out our ambient temperature probe and pull off the lid and let's check these out. <laughs> Starting to get some really good color. I don't know if you can see that. I'll bring it right over here, but... Starting to look really nice. Hmm, good. Developing a little bit of bark, but not enough yet. Rotate this around again. Get our lid back on. Now I'm an hour and a half into this cook, but I'll bring you back when I'm closer to wrapping these St. Louis ribs up. Because we're gonna wanna get these ribs nice and tender, but they still got a little bit more time to go in here. 
but there's no sense to keep on bringing you back every 30 minutes to watch me just rotate them. And the Smoke and Go has been running right around 290 degrees for this whole hour and a half. Now I've been opening up the lid every half an hour so the charcoal is getting a lot more air and it's a really windy day today, but I'm still impressed how well this has been holding right at 290 degrees. That's only like 15 degrees over than what I cook on a pellet grill and you people that have some of those box store pellet grills, you know it can go up to 350 degrees down to 250 degrees in a heartbeat. Our main concern is just to make sure that these get done. That's it. I'm up north. This is my relaxing time. Oh, I gotta have a beer. So we're three hours into this cook, but my guess is these things are ready to get wrapped up. Now I just typically use a little sauce in my wrap and I took advantage of the smoke and go that it's hot and went ahead and put my sauce right on top so it could heat up so I'm not dumping cold sauce on these ribs. So let's get this rack out and foil it up. Now again with these clamps, you don't absolutely have to use them if you're cooking over 200 degrees, but because it was so darn windy earlier, I used them and actually it helped the smoke and go get down to 275 degrees and I just ran it straight from there. Let's get this out. Oh yeah, you can see that's flexy. Plus these bones are looking really nice. I don't even think I have to wrap these to be honest with you, but we're still going to do it just for a little bit. Now most of you have seen me do this, but I just go ahead and sploosh a little bit right in the center and a little bit on the back of the bone. And like always, bracer pulled too much foil. Get it nice and tight. Now we'll just pick up the lid and we'll just set it right back in there. We'll still put in our ambient temperature probe, but we really don't need it anymore. So now I'm gonna set a timer for a half an hour and then I'm gonna check them for doneness, but I can tell just by holding them, half an hour is all it's gonna take. It's getting late and I'm getting hungry. These ribs better hurry up. But man, this campfire feels awesome. Our 30 minute timer went off. Let's go ahead and get these St. Louis ribs out of the smoke and go. It's time to eat. We'll get these ribs out, but we'll go ahead and put our lid back on because there's no reason to burn all this charcoal up. And I'll show you how much charcoal is left in the smoke and go after this three and a half hour cook. Now this is always the fun part. I can certainly smell heaven. They are nice and warm. Oh yeah, these are easily done this off the aluminum foil and we're just gonna dump a little bit of this sweet goodness right across them now make sure you throw your foil away because the bears are gonna be coming let's cut into one of these get this one out Okay, so here's our finished product. It looks really good. I see a little bit of smoke ring. I probably could have put another chunk of wood in there, but it's got some smoke in it. Let's take a bite. Oh yeah, clearly done. Hey, stay down there. I hope this camera can pull this through because there's a lot of juice in this. Very tender. I'm making a mess of myself, but that's what mud and ribs are about. If you don't have sauce on your face, they ain't any good. All right, so that was so good, I gotta have another one, for sure. But just look at that. That's a good looking rib. Again, clean bite. Little sauce on the chin. Good job, smoke and go. And this Simon's barbecue and jalapeno rub, great on pork. I told you that before, and I mean it. I mean, you might even be able to see a chunk of the jalapeno on there. I mean, it's just little chunks, and it's so delicious. And the great thing about going up north, I can't get in trouble for having a messy Marvin face for my wife. Sorry, honey. So I'm gonna show you real quick how much charcoal I still have left in the smoke and go. Now there's plenty left in here, probably another three and a half hours, and I didn't even fill it all the way up. Now my first thoughts about the smoke and go, I'm pretty impressed. It's compact, you can store it easily. And when you go up north, do you really wanna haul a big bulky grill? I don't, and to be honest with you, most of the time we cook right on top of that fire pit. Because when you're camping, you got a lot of other stuff that you wanna haul instead of a big bulky pellet grill or even like a Weber kettle. I mean, that takes up a lot of room in the back of a pickup truck. I see myself using it a lot for a fire pit at our house. I got this nice stand. I can put it right outside by us. There's no more going all the way back to the swamp anymore 
to sit by a fire ring. We can use the smoke and go for that. Now, I also was very impressed when I took it out of the box, how solid and how well it was built. This thing ain't gonna just crack in half on you. Now, the design of it is pretty dang basic, but it does the job. And the way I set it up, we're getting some convection on it because on this side, on the bottom, is my intake. And on this side, on top of the lid, is my vent. And that gave us some good airflow through this cooker, which helped make these ribs turn out great. And to grill on it, it's a breeze, trust me. Now, the only con that I can really come up with on the smoke and go is that it is a little heavy. So you might have to use both arms to carry it, but when you're a big guy like me, it's easy. I mean, come on, these are perfect. Really? <laughs> Look at how tender that is. Now, if you're interested in the smoke and go, check the links below so you can start making some ribs like this when you're camping. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and become a subscriber. Turn on that notification bell because you don't want to miss my next video. I know you don't, but I appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next video. The back 40, that's like in the farm, your back 40. <laughs>